Let's take a look at an example. How would you make this code exception safe? Take your time to think a little bit about it. Exception safety in C++ is hard. If you have ever tried to truly write exception safe code, you know what I mean. True exception safety means that nothing in your program is changed in case an exception is thrown. So the program state is unaltered to the state before the exception was thrown. Let's look at the example that I gave you before. So we have a user database and we have a user and the user can have friends. So it has a name and it can have friends. The friends are stored in a ve vector and then there is this overall user database which is a pointer so where all of the different users are being stored. And here we have the problem. Like if we want to add a friend, we need to do two things. We need to add the friend to the database because it might be that this user is currently not in the database and we need to add the friend to the friends list of this respective user. So the problem here is that this one here might throw, right? You all know vector and if you have vector, this here might throw because, I don't know, your, uh, your memory gets over flooded so you don't have any space left because the vector needs to allocate more space and this might fail because your hard drive is already full and then you run into this exception. It doesn't happen often, but it happens. And then you think like, oh, okay, let's just do this the other way around, right? So uh, we do it like this. So we push the friend first to the vector. If it fails, you go out, you have the exception. But if it doesn't, you go through and you add it to the database. However, you now talk to the guy who implemented the database and this guy tells you, yeah, database might throw as well. And now you have a problem because you have now two functions and two parts of the function where both of them might throw. And if you have an exception in the second one, you want to revert or you want to not do the stuff that the first function is doing. So if the database here might throw, you need to make sure that the friend doesn't get added to the friend vector. Switching it around didn't work. But let's have a look at different examples how you can solve this. The first solution that comes to mind is brute force. Brute force is always great. But in this case, it's really ugly code and it also doesn't really scale well. But let's have a look at it. So you add the friend to your friends vector and then you just try catch whatever you want to do afterwards. So you try to do whatever you need to do in the database. So you add the friend to the database and in case this one throws, you just pop back the last uh, element of the friends vector and then you're done with it. But honestly, this solution isn't great because you have now made a two-liner into a 10-liner, basically. It doesn't scale very well. So for instance, if you now have a third statement, which could throw as well, you need to have nested try-catch statements and the logic of your program gets suddenly really, really complicated and you want to avoid it. So brute force probably is not the way to go. But hey, we are in C++, so you probably know the right principle. And in this case, let's just write a class who does exactly that. And this is where you end up with so-called inserters. And an inserter is now just taking whatever you want to take and inserting it. And in the destructor of the inserter, you basically check whether a condition is true and then you might pop back or you don't pop back, depending on the result of the condition. So how you would use this vector inserter is now you have this inserter, you create it with your, um, your two variables, the friends and the new friend. And then you try to add the friend to the database. In case everything is fine, you reach this last line where you basically commit to the changes of the vector inserter and then you're done. Everything is okay. In case this one here throws an exception, the vector inserter didn't get committed. And in case the vector inserter didn't get committed, you take your container and you pop back the last element, which basically makes this code here exception safe. However, there's still a problem. The main problem here is that the vector inserter is now very specific to these two kinds of input. 
So every time you need to have exception safe code, you need to write a class which is 20 lines long or something, and you don't really want to do that, right? So you want to have a solution which is more general. And by the way, this one still has a bug. If you find it, post a comment below. By the way, this is the code that might end up in production. In the review, most people will argue that, yeah, but this exception rarely ever happens, and if it happens, we have bigger problems, and then we're fine with the program crashing. But then your class gets reused on the server, and somehow you actually run into this issue, and it's impossible to debug. So please, 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 don't be that guy who pushes such a thing to production. But let's have a look how this is actually solved and how it is solved in a very general way so you can reuse it. The technique called is scope guard or also scope exit. So the scope guard, it might have the different implementation. I show here one that uh, relies on lambdas, but there might also be a little bit of other implementations. But I find this one nice because it's really, really short and uh, also because you can easily explain what is happening here. So the scope, scope guard itself is templated of the type T and the T is a functor. So T could be anything that you actually can call. And this is also what gets called during the exit. The scope guard itself is just constructed with this functor and then the functor is stored for later engagement. You could also store here probably a reference to the functor. So uh, because you might say that the scope guard never gets out of scope before the functor. Um, so it might also be possible to just store the reference. Um, you see that copy and um, also copy assignment is deleted. And this is because uh, the scope guard should never be copied or should never be assigned because then it's difficult to say whether it should actually perform its deletion option. And then in the destructor, you have the same principle as with the inserter. You basically see whether the scope guard is engaged and by default, it's always engaged, which means that by default, it will always call the functor in its destructor. And this is the, the concept and you have one function which is release and the release function just says that the back, uh, scope guard should not be engaged anymore and at this point, it doesn't call the functor in the destructor. The important thing here is that uh, release here is no except, which means that this part of the code will never throw. And you tell it that also explicitly the compiler that it will never throw. So this part here is per definition always exception safe. Very important though is that the functor here itself should also never throw because in a destructor, you should never have code that throws because by, by design of C++, if you have a destructor which throws, it's impossible to write exception safe code. So the functor itself should never throw. Um, and then this is already the concept of the class. The cool thing here is now you can give anything as a functor. So uh, if you have here a scope guard and you might call it like that, you create the scope guard and here inside the scope guard, we just say that I didn't get released. If the scope guard didn't get released, it will print this to the console. If it gets released, it won't print it to the console. We compile the program and we see that nothing gets output because at the end here, we have this guard release statement and guard release means that the destructor will not execute whatever you give him here. And on the other side, if we um, comment this one, so we simulate the exception to happen and this statement is not, um, not done. Then if we compile the program, we get, get this output, I didn't get released, which means that the scope guard did actually call this in its destructor. Then you can use the scope guard like that. You have your friends again, you push back the new friend inside your friends, you create a scope guard and the scope guard has here a reference to the friends vector. Uh, so you just do it in a Lambda, which is pretty easy because you basically can wrap anything in a Lambda. And then you just pop back um, on the, if the scope guard didn't get released, then you add the database, you add the friend to the database, you call the release at the end. This one will never throw. And if you don't reach the statement because your database did throw, then friends popback is called, otherwise it's not called and you're in a truly safe state. So if we, for instance, look at boost here in boost, it is called scope exit. And I also think that boost has offered this functionality first. So it's, it's actually quite old, um, but it's still a very, very cool concept. 
Um, so here they basically have the same with all the boost stuff uh, where, they, where they do the stuff. But what is also kind of interesting that in the standard library it's currently in some sort of an experimental scope. So here it is called scope underscore exit and here in the experimental version you can probably assume that sooner or later it will end up in the standard um, so you can also use it from there. Um, right now it's just an experimental section but who knows. That's all from me for today. If you still want to learn a little bit more about C++, you should watch this video and as always, enjoy coding.